Today we're going to learn how to run the 1140 Microsoft Mark 10 instrument. Before we start, in order to run the Microsoft, you have to purchase six packs. And the six packs come with six text kits, such as this. They're vacuum packed to keep moisture out. And inside that six pack, you will also receive a bottle of distilled water. We prefer you use distilled water because deionized water as well as tap water will skew the results of the test. This test is based on consistency. Now inside that test kit you will receive a 60 milliliter syringe, a vial, an alumicell, a pipette tip, and a tip to plug the syringe. Also, you will receive three wipes. I would like to make a note of caution. Normally we run this test under a fume hood but for demonstration and filming purposes, we're going to run it on an open bench. Also, remember that before you run the test, that your instrument, your fuel, and all your supplies are at a constant temperature between 70 and 75 degrees. Ideally, the humidity should be less than 75%. We want to get consistent results, so Obeying these, these parameters will give you a better, consistent re result. So we open up the instrument, and we open up the right side panel, making sure that the hinge, the stay hinge, stays open so that you, the weight of the drive panel will not uh, come down and hurt you the syringe guard plug it in add your ground lead and turn it on you should wait about 30 minutes before you run the test make a note that on the Mark 10 we can do several test methods. We can do method thirty nine forty eight, which is jet fuel. We can do method seventy two twenty four, which is an M cell. This is used for light surfactants such as uh, conductivity additive to give you a good result. We can use test method 7261, which is the diesel test, and we can do method 4860, which is the clear and bright. Place one of the wipes we gave you to help with spills. Place the catch basin under the syringe drive. This is the syringe drive, this is the emulsifier. Remove the emulsifier guard in place where you can put it back. In that six pack kit, you receive the syringe. Remove the plunger and insert the syringe tip in the base so that the fuel doesn't come out when you pour it in there. Then take 50 milliliters of fuel, fill it up to that point, and put it on the, the uh, emulsifier. Also take the glass vial and put between 15 and 20 mils of fuel in the glass bottle. Take the wipe, 
wipe the vial to make sure that there's nothing on the outside of the vial that can cause the, ch the reading to change. Insert the vial with the line on the vial about a quarter turn and turn the vial into the line and line up the line on the vial with the line on the Mark 10 instrument. If you're running Jet A, push Jet A. As you can see, the intelligence of the machine is telling you exactly what to do and saying, insert first cleaning sample into emulsifier, which we've done. Now we push the clean. syringe from the emulsifier and dump out the fuel. Refill with another 50 milliliters of fuel and insert on the emulsifier. If you notice again, the machine is telling you to insert second clean sample on the, on the EMU, which we've just done. At this point, push clean two one time. This time, remove the syringe from the emulsifier. The syringe drive will go up to its full length at this time. The reason we clean the sample is we're not actually cleaning the fuel. We're cleaning the syringe for any contaminants that may have been uh, given there by the manufacturer. Dump that fuel. Uh, this time, you have that bottle of water that came with the six-pack. That should be placed in that bottle holder. You have a pipette that was, comes with the instrument. You put the uh, tip on the micro, uh, 50 microliter pipette. We pour a new sample of fuel in the syringe. 50 milliliters, we go to the distilled water and we take out 50 microliters of distilled water. We put that into the syringe, eject that water into the fuel, we suck up a little bit of the fuel, eject it again, and then remove it from the syringe. This ensures that all the water went into the fuel. Place the syringe on the emulsifier and hit the run cycle. And as you can see on the display again, it's telling you to verify vial with test fuel is in the in the in the well, in the turb well, and it's saying also to put the fuel and the water in the, in the, in the actual test sample. At this point, we hit run. The instrument will automatically set for 100. 
and verify that the test is ready to run. That reference fuel is what you began with. Dump that fuel. And wait for the sample. In the meantime, take the plunger and wipe the tip of the plunger because some contaminant from the manufacturer may be on the tip of the plunger. So you wipe that plunger. So you remove the syringe at this point, insert the plunger, turn it over, remove the tip. Take your wipe and bring that plunger to 50 milliliters. Insert the Aluma cell in the bottom, put it in the syringe, and connect the ground lead to the Aluma cell. Now you're going to catch the last 15 milliliters. The instrument will tell you when to collect that sample. Take this vial, again, wipe it so that make sure that you're only looking at the fuel and the glass and not any contaminants. Insert approximately a quarter inch away and rotate the vial to line up those lines. That ensures that you're looking at the same point you were when you were looking at the reference fuel. Now it's just a matter of time to, for the instrument to come up with the uh, test sample number. As you can see, it's still 100. The Aluma cell on the test removed all the water that we had emulsified in the syringe and uh, gave us a, a reading of 100. Now, if you happen to forget or not hear when that reading uh, comes up, you can hit recall one time and it will give you the previous data from that. So if you happen to walk away and you miss it, you can still get it. It will only hold the memory of one, one reading. We also do a Jet V test, clear and bright, and a diesel test. We also make an Aluma cell that will do a jet fuel test with light surfactants in it. It's called an M cell. For the diesel test, you will have to buy a diesel cell.